A lot going on here in the Queen City. There's Tryon Street in Uptown Charlotte, home of the Hornets. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to 2K Sports and another exciting edition of NBA Basketball. This is Kevin Harlan, and by my side, Chris Weber and Greg Anthony from the sideline, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Here we are in November, and let's see how things are going out east in the early season. You look at the Celtics. They've got the number one record in the conference, and because of it, each night out, their competition is going to bring it right at them. And, of course, the Hornets right now quite a ways down below. And, you know, for Boston, they have caught the entire league off guard. This was not a position anyone thought they'd be in at this stage of the season. But yeah, Greg, I mean, they had a plan coming into the year. I mean, they stuck to it, and it's worked to perfection. Now let's send it down to David Aldridge standing by from the sidelines. David? Guys, Celtics coach Brad Stevens is known for his play calling. Ron James said... He has so many different wrinkles. You've got to keep your head on a swivel. He'll run something you've never seen before. But Steven said, honest to God, I've stolen everything we've ever done from somebody else. Kevin? <laughs> I love his honesty. All right, thank you, DA. You know, Chris, it seems like every year the NBA gets a little more athletic. Talk about how that aspect of the game has changed. I was 6'9", and I played power forward and sometimes center. Kevin Durant is 6'11", and he plays the two guard. That's how the game is changing. It's no more big guys go to that end, little guys go to that end. Now you have to be a skilled basketball player. You have to be able to shoot, dribble, and pass at every position. The, the way of the just the one-sided guy, that has gone out the game. That's a dinosaur. And, I love it. You have to be more athletic, definitely, but the skill set. You got to make sure you can play basketball in that way, no matter what size you are. 5'9 to 7 foot. You have to be equal in skill, and I love that. Wow, I do too. So let's take a look at the Boston Celtics starting lineup. Down is the two with Tatum at the three. That is one out there with Horford, and it's White in at the point guard. And for Charlotte, we've got Montrez Harrell. Hayward out there with Bridges. Then it's Devin Harris, and it's Ball in at the point guard position. Now here's Tatum after Devin Harris's miss. Tatum passes the baddest one. And he drops in the layup off the glass. And once he got to the 10, I think he was surprised to find himself that wide open. Yeah, very little resistance. I mean, you had to bring much faster help than that. Now here's Ball. He's coming off a 28-point game against Indiana. And that didn't come at the cost of his defense. In fact, I think it fed his defense. He had four steals in that game. Five to shoot. The pass to Hayward. No one near him. Jump shot is good that time. Quick decision maker. Hayward wasting no time. Launches it right out of the cap. Right the pass, the baddest one. Hayward against Horford. Pass to White. Let's it go with a three. And the three ball is good. And good to get him going early. That, that shot should give him some confidence. Yeah, it's all about establishing a rhythm. I mean, you start to see it fall, you begin to believe. Now, here's Ball. Passes it to Bridges. Oh, good with the triple. For Boston, they've gone two or three here to start out the game. To the middle, baddest one. The shot's good. Brown making the play. Baddest one's got his second basket of the night. How about three or four from the floor to start? That's always a good sign. Pass to Hayward. Back to Bridges. And taken away by Brown. And here comes Brown. Leading the fast break. That one good for two. They've come out with guns blazing. Four for five from the field. They've got the D really. Harris outside. First quarter of basketball. Just over two and a half minutes play. Here's Bridges. 
blanketed by the D. He fights to the rim for the layup. Adept at maintaining his balance on the way up. Bridges, a strong player who can play through contact. White against Ball. And here's Tatum for three. Misses that one. He's 0 for 1 from the floor. Feeds to Hero. It's deflected. Now White. High arcing shot. And it's out of bounds. Fast touch by White. And for a look at how the competition stacks up right now. These, the new power rankings, they tell a great story. You look at Minnesota. They're gaining on some of the teams above them, trying hard to crack into that top five. And I think for the Hornets, they're happy with this latest stretch of games. This is the time of year for optimism. At this point, anything is possible. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. And wow, you just have to love the motor on Montrez Harrell when he's on the floor. Great on the glass, and he just plays with such a, a fire. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw missing. And with Harrow, you can see how his energy spreads to the rest of the team. Reminds me a bit of what Fareed used to bring to teams. Harrell is also undersized, but boy, he makes up for it in so many ways. He hits the second from the line. Boston leading by four. White dishes to Tatum. First quarter of play and uh, just over three and a half minutes in. White looking around. Just four to shoot. That's tipped. A second chance effort. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. We're looking now at some numbers from Montrez Harrell. Good season for him last year. Fifth in field goal percentage. And he's a shot blocker as well. Top 20 in that category last season. Great timing and challenges at the rim. And yeah, he's one of the most efficient scorers in the league for sure. Moves without the ball, avoids taking the bad shots. That's why he was top five in field goal percentage last year. White against Harris. Three-pointer. Charlotte no good that time either. And here's Brown. He'll bring it up for the Celtics. Launches a three. His second shot goes in. Off to a good start. Two for two. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Harris against White. Harris kicks the ball. And there's the pass to Hayward. Fades. And the basket is good. And this is one of Hayward's strengths. I mean, keeping the medium range shot alive. Austin leading by five. Here's Baddest one. He gets that one. Baddest one's got six points. Here's Ball. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Pass to Bridges. Over Tatum. Offensive rebound. Harris finds Harrell. And good coming on the assist from Devin Harris. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Horford against Hayward. Here's baddest one. He had a 15-point outing in their last game against the Cavaliers in Cleveland. And his rebounding was solid in that effort as well. He did a lot of work on the glass. All around, it just his effort level was off the charts. Here's Hayward. And Boston with the rebound. I mean, that can happen to anyone, but it's ugly every time it does. Oh, man, you just want to go find some place to hide, man. It's almost impossible to miss that. You know, his offensive skill set is off the charts. 
He has more than a few ways to punish. Ball with it. And Derek White picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. Just a little too amped up here early. Two fouls on him already. That's going to affect his playing time. Some changes for Charlotte. Zeller is checked in for Hayward. And it's Rozier in for Harris. Boston also with the sub. Smart's checked in for White. And there's the whistle. Illegal screen. Uh, when a pick like that is questionable and creates that much of an advantage for the offense, you have to blow the whistle. Yeah, you can't blame the ref for making that call at all. The defense in general is already at such a disadvantage as it is. Now here's Smart. Brown outside. And the Celtics hit again from deep. Yeah, those are starting to add up, guys. Of their last five baskets, three have been tripled. Well, last season, the chemistry for the Celtics, well, to put it nicely, it was lacking. I mean, they had friction over playing time, uh, players pointing fingers. Uh, Marcus Smart said it. I mean, they weren't together. Bridges, and he hits the jumper for two. Just so precise off the pass. I, I like how Bridges prepares himself to shoot as the ball is coming his way. Celtics leading by nine. Smart passes to Horford. Now Brown. He's defended by Harrell. Here's Smart. It's tipped. To the wing on the left. Rozier kicks the ball. Back to Rozier. He's looking for Horford and finds him. And a fast break now for the Celtics. Here's Tatum. And another basket for Boston. And the defense looks soft early on. They've got to sum it up. A little more sense of urgency. And now the first timeout called here for the Hornets. And Chris, just an uneasy silence in the Celtics locker room last season. The bench really not celebrating plays. How do they regain that joy? Yeah, Kevin, it's, it's, it's so tough uh, when you don't have uh, good chemistry. Uh, I think you start with putting the team first. Uh, and leadership, uh, it, it starts with being a good follower. It starts with sacrifice. Yeah. Man, just lost him get me some. Go here, get you some. Yeah. Gomez has checked in for the Hornets. Michael Kidd Gilchrist comes in for Bridges. Then for the Celtics, Williams, he's checked in for the baddest one. Alinari comes in for Al Horford. And Brogdon subbed in for Tatum. Now, here's Ball. He's gotten some minutes, but nothing on the board yet. To the paint, here's Zeller. Doesn't go for him. Excellent D there from Williams. Celtics leading by 11. Brogdon outside. Brown outside. Score the basket. His fourth. He's only missed one of his five shots tonight. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. And here is Ball beyond the arc. That one's no good. 0 of 1 to begin the game. Brown inside. Kid Gilchrist there. Some solid defense from Kid Gilchrist. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. Four on three as they bring it up. Here's Brown. Hornets with the rebound. Bulls got four rebounds now tonight. Passes it to Rozier. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Yeah, another nice bucket down low. They've really been able to work the ball into the post effectively here so far. Now, here's Brogdon. An 11-point game for him in the win against Cleveland. Yeah, but it wasn't all about himself. I mean, he kept everybody else in the loop. His passing was tremendous. And there's the call on Cody Zeller. That's his first foul. Brown inside. Rozier defending. Five on the clock. 
And they call the foul, so he's got the and one chance here to make it a three-point play. And the game plan is clear. Work the ball inside. Well, last season, a bit of a renaissance for Gallinari. And the way Gallinari stepped up last season, Kevin, was a big reason the Clippers were as strong as they were. Now on the other side of 30, he's been playing some of his best basketball here of late. That free throw good from Gallinari. There's a lot of uh, expectations, high expectations when uh, you're the number one overall pick in the draft. You know it well. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, it's something that I wanted. Uh, you know, Derek Coleman was from Detroit, and two years earlier, he was the number one pick. And I'd always been a fan of his, so I felt like he was passing the baton, and, and I had to kind of do what he did. And then Shaquille O'Neal was rookie of the year before myself and, and the number one pick. And so uh, uh, for me, I, I looked at it as, yeah, a pretty big weight, but the honor was more than the weight. And I, I, I was honored to be pick number one, and, and I relished in that, and I had great teammates that allowed me to flourish in that role. Now, here is Hernan Gomez. Danilo Gallinari, unable to get his last shot to go. Here's Zeller, and he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Now, there's the high basketball IQ of Zeller. He knows he's going to get whacked, but he turns it into an and one. And with Cody Zeller, he has a very workmanlike approach when he's on the floor. Yeah, Kevin, and, and that's what Zeller is all about, playing a simple meat and potatoes type game. I mean, what he does won't One show shot. up in the box score, but it'll show up in the standings. And that one falls for Zeller. You know, Kevin, it wasn't a bad year for the Hornets last season. I mean, they missed the playoffs, but they were stuck in middle ground. I mean, they were right in the fight for it. This team wants to be a contender, but the best path to that goal isn't easy to see. Yeah, they got that one, but early on, it's it's really been a struggle for them to secure that defensive backboard. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. Yeah, and there it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great inside position. And the Celtics with possession here, following the bucket by the Hornets, and it's in there. And the playoff drought for the Hornets weighing on everybody's mind. No, oh, man, three years straight of uh, missing the playoffs. 2002 was the last time the Hornets made it out of the first round. I can't find any sustained success from the franchise. Tries again, shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And he gets a chance to look at Sats for Zeller. A very nice season for him last year. Averaged 10 points per game, six rebounds, and two assists. Guys, he's a difference maker off the bench. Steps into that front court and more than holds his own. Well, it's his willingness to break. bang down Take low and move opponents off two the shots. block. Those are valuable contributions. The first free throw is good. Uh, and after watching Willie Hernan Gomez, I mean, play a few seasons, it is clear he has skills on the offensive end. It's the rest of his game that needs a little bit of rounding up. Boston making a switch here. Williams has checked in. And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. 55 seconds left to play in the first. Smart kicks to Williams. Pass to Williams. The pass to Smart. Jacks up a three. It's good. Great play by Williams to set it up. Smart's got five. Their play on both ends has been superb. We, we'll see if they can maintain the momentum. Yeah, you got to be careful. It's still early. They've expended a lot of energy, but they've also built a nice cushion here. Now, here's Rogier. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Kid Gilchrist. The kick out to Rogier. And again, the Hornets missing. 
Gallinari right side. And the bucket is good. Three-point play Shot's chance good. here for him. I like their Shot's focus good. coming in. Terrific execution so far. Going for the juggler right off the bat. I mean, jumping out to an impressive early lead. This is his second attempt at the line tonight. And, and over the course of last year, he was up over 90%. And with a stroke like that, you see why. time but no good and so it's the Boston Celtics their lead at 15 going into the break and if they keep training the threes like they've been so far their lead is safe don't go anywhere we'll be right back Al Horford was born in the Dominican Republic, and he talked about why he gravitated towards basketball instead of baseball. Coming from a place where you know, baseball is what's driven to us every time. I mean, I started playing baseball. I didn't play basketball. I started playing baseball, and, you know, just watching my dad play basketball, I just fell in love with the game. But people were still telling me, they're like, nobody makes it out of here, usually out of basketball. I mean, your dad was a very rare case, and... Uh, you know, I just believed in it. Yeah, wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. And, and what a career. A college championships at Florida, an all-star in the NBA. I think he made the right choice. And glad to have you with us, folks. Second quarter of basketball. This game has not exactly been neck and neck, but plenty of time left in this one. And guys, we've seen the Celtics really take control here. They came in on a mission, razor-sharp offense in that first period. Yeah, and now they got to find a way to keep it going, keep growing that lead. We've got balls. Running Gomez out there with Bismack Biombo. Then there's Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and it's Rozier in at the two-guard spot. So that's the lineup for Charlotte. Now, here's Rozier. Marcus Smart missing that last shot. Biombo dishes to Kidd Gilchrist. Two on the clock over Gallinari. Here's Biombo. Good. Biombo's got his first two points. And, and that's why you never stop working in the paint at either end of the floor. Gallinari outside. Elbow shot. No good that time. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. Following this one, they get to host the Pelicans. That game will conclude a three-game homestand. Celtics leading by 13. The Celtics working the ball around now. And it's Williams throwing it down. The D just kind of stepping aside and letting him get to the rim. There's a reason, G.A., the lead is what it is right now. Oh, Kevin, the coaching staff has to be upset. You can't give the opposition easy buckets like this, G.A. Here's Hernan Gomez following the bucket by the Celtics. Here's Kid Gilchrist. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. Chris, we talk about perimeter scoring becoming more prevalent. The biggest shift coming from bigs shooting more threes. Yeah, they are now Take counted break. upon the Take space break. the floor. And the better Two you shots. can shoot, the better you can space the floor. And then more importantly, if you can knock down that three, you become a triple threat because now you can shoot there. Maybe you can dribble and get by. Or because of your height, you see different passing lanes and you can be a better passer, getting your teammates involved. And they like that spacing as well. Some changes for Charlotte. Gordon Hayward comes in for Hernan Gomez. And Harris subbed in for ball. Derek White checked in for the Celtics. And he sinks the second. 
and a big summer for the Celtics. Some key decisions with multiple players hitting free agency. Yeah, and with some comments from players like Terry Rozier in the offseason, you had a sense this roster could have a different look. I mean, now they're hoping the pieces fit and players can buy in with their roles. Now here's White. Nine points, last game out. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Here is the 2K leaderboard with the list of last season's top three-point shooters. Fifth best, going out. The bucket must have looked three feet wide to him last year. I mean, very deserving in terms of that spot among the league leaders from three. The first one falls. And the Hornets as a franchise trying to figure out their direction. Yeah, the team was torn on whether to rebuild or go for the playoffs. The fan base, well, they were split as well on what to do. I mean, it's, it's been this way for years. Team is just stuck in the middle. Bridges, he's checked in for Charlotte. Boston also with the sub. Tatum's checked in. Both good from the line that time. For so long, the Hornets have been a perimeter-oriented team. Chris, now they need to find an impact big man. Yeah, well, G.A., remember, they did have a couple of good years with Al Jefferson, where he was a force inside. But that was the last time the team made the playoffs. More balance in their attack would do wonders for this offense. Oh, that's terrific defense there. That's how you protect the rim. Doubled by Bridges. The three. Bridges with the board. Hornets trail by 16. From past the arc, Krill's the three-pointer. Bridges has got seven. Well, just a proven threat from beyond, and Bridges has a good feel for when to fire him from there. Here's Williams. Got it. Good job in the low post. And the Celtics lead by 15. That kind of power move has become a trademark of his. White against Rogier. The feed now to Hayward. Bridges for three. The basket good off the assist from Hayward. And that's now 10 points for Miles Bridges. That's his second three-pointer of this quarter after not getting any in the first. Rocked in the pass to Williams. Back to Brogdon. From downtown. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. And an eye for an eye. Both teams working to stretch the floor. Well, these days, so much emphasis on the perimeter game. But you can see why after that sequence. Here is kicks to Bridges. Off with the layup. Some very aggressive defense to prevent the easy lay-in. Pass to Williams. Outside, White. Outside, Tatum. From deep. Hornets with the rebound, but they recover it. The shot by Brogdon, no good. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Now here is Harris. Still getting warmed up offensively. No scoring hit from him. For three, Bridges. And the Hornets miss again. And here's White. He'll bring it up for Boston. And stolen by Harris. Passes to Hayward. Back to Harris. Bridges, no one around him. Good. And Harris gets the assist. Harris has got three assists in the game. Their third three-pointer in a row. And stolen by Harris. And now Harris running the floor all by himself. And they need those kind of plays right now. Smart defense that generates some oak. Celtics leading by 10. Outside, White in the corner. Tatum with it. 
and a miss there on the triple. The Hornets have gone 5 of 11 from the field since the beginning of the second quarter. Bridges against White. Now, here's Bridges, guarded closely. Lock at six. Harris against Brogdon. Shoots the three. And that one's in there. The Boston lead is cut down to seven on the bucket from Harris. Oh, he can be sneaky good from deep sometimes. I mean, when he gets clean looks, he's got the ability to do some damage out there. Now, here's White. Knocks it loose. And stolen by Biombo. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. And the size of Hayward is an advantage inside. I mean, does a good job at drawing contact. You talk about players that have transformed their bodies in the NBA. How about Gordon Hayward? Uh, has added muscle every year while maintaining that speed and agility. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Free throw good from Hayward. You know, Greg, when he came into the league, Hayward looked so young. You almost don't recognize him now. I mean, the suit of armor from his time in the weight room and the hair looking sharp to match. And the Hornets making a change here. Harrell's checked in and then for Boston. Baddest one's checked in for Williams. Horford comes in for Williams. And it's Brown in for Malcolm Brogdon. Well, he was the ninth overall pick in the 2010 draft. If it were held again, only a couple guys would be selected ahead of him. Here's Brown. Buries it from about 10 feet away. Brown's got 12 in the game. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. Yeah, that's why he's hot. He's playing with a lot of confidence. That's why they're going to him with such consistency. Now here is Harris. He's got five. Pass to Bridges. The Hornets need to get a shot off here. Rogier for three. Now Horford with the rebound. Horford's got four rebounds in this game. His offense has been non-existent tonight. It's really hurting him. White against Rogier. They'll double him with Arrow. In the corner, Horford with it. A three-pointer off the mark. Hornets trail by seven. Left side, Harris. Here's Harrell. And the Hornets miss again. Very dangerous to lead a guy like that open. Lucky break there for the D. No good that time. And Charlotte will go the other way with it. Ogier the pass to Hayward. Back to Rozier. Shoots over Brown. And it's Rozier missing. So for the Hornets, their last game, a win against Indiana. Yeah, and that one, their intensity on the offensive end was not matched by their opponent. That led to some easy buckets. They just looked a step quicker all game long. They knew they had an advantage on offense. Charlotte has gone 4-6 from long range in the second quarter. Solid shooting. And pushing it up. Here's Boston. White's running. Comes up empty down low. The Hornets trail. Rozier looking around. Over White. Charlotte gets it back. Ball's knocked loose. And here comes White. Leading the fast break. Fires from 14. Here's Tatum. He hits through for a second time basket. Out, He's now out. two for six. The anticipation, the length. Tatum maximizes the opportunity on both ends. Charlotte calls timeout. Chris, when it comes to playing alongside another big guy, uh, I, I'm sure you have to think of ways to complement each other. Not just him, but it's got to be a two-way street. Yeah, but it starts with chemistry, starts with friendship, it starts with wanting to win. And I played with two big guys that come to mind that, that made me better. Jawan Howard there and 
And Washington just looking at him, throwing a oop. I would miss two, three shots in a row, and we'd look, and he'd say, I'll get you an easy one, big fella. And I would do the same thing to him. We're playing with a guy like Vladi that would say, hey, wait a minute. Bibby or Peja didn't get a shot. Set a screen for them, and he would pass it to them. And then the next play, say, now it's your turn. You're open because they're going to go over there to those guys. We already tricked the defensive end. So guys that are smart, guys that can pass, and also guys that will say, hey, man, you look a little tired. Uh, let's switch. I'll check Shaq this play. <laughs> Catching up on the changes for Charlotte. Cody Zellers checked in for Hayward. Michael Kidd Gilchrist comes in for Miles Bridges. And Ball subbed in for Rozier. Now, here's Ball. He's still scoreless so far in this one. Man, when the ball's in his hands, that's as high percentage as it gets. It's just a fluke miss. He gets a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Charlotte's had to wait a bit the last few years. Now, the city hosted the All-Star game last season. But for the Hornets, they've gone three seasons without a playoff appearance and 15 seasons without winning a playoff series. In that time, the franchise has had seven head coaches and a shifting front office. But Buzz City is hoping that its wait for playoff relevance will end soon. Kevin? We all want. David, thank you. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. He feeds it to Harris. Harold drives in. It's deflected. Harris against Smart. Here's baddest one. Zeller grabs the board. And here's Ball. He'll bring it up for the Hornets. 11-point game. In the corner, it's Kid Gilchrist. Back to Ball. Shot clock at six. It's Kid Gilchrist on the way. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. Ball's got assist number five here tonight. I like how confident Kid Gilchrist looks behind that arc. Launching that triple with his unorthodox shooting form. Bounce pass from Smart. Here's baddest one. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. Right wing. And Zeller kicks the ball. Back to Zeller. Nice pass in here by Charlotte. Kid Gilchrist dishes to Harrell. And it's sent back by Horford. Oh, he's a solid shot blocker now. It's thanks to his timing and great anticipation skill. It's not easy scoring on Horford. Not a lot of resistance on the inside, and they're taking full advantage. There's 53 seconds left in the first half of basketball. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. Harris passes the ball. And Smart over to help. Here's Kid Gilchrist. And it's the Hornets, another three. I mean, it took him a long time to get into the flow of the game, but the points are starting to come for him. Smart up top. He's covered by Ball. To the left wing. And Horford wide open. He shoots. From out on the wing, he knocks it down. Horford's got seven. From that in-between range, they've been the much better team. Now, Ball. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Here's Harrell. And no good on the last second attempt this time. And so it's Boston. Ahead by nine as the quarter comes to a close. They've been playing some ferocious defense. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Here with head coach Brad Stevens. Coach, what did you think was the main edge you had? Well, I thought defensively we were a lot better, um, and then that led to some offense. But obviously, we're playing a bunch of skilled guys, and we're able to spread the floor, and that's helpful. You have to make them work at both ends. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. 
Hey, everybody, good to see you back here on our halftime show. Well, actually, we can't see you, but you can see us, but you get it. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. You're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. A tremendous game we're seeing from Jalen Brown. He had 12 points, two rebounds, and one assist. Taking a look at the Celtics, Shaq, what do you think? Well, they really dictated the pace of the game with their transition game. They got out on the break every chance they had, and the time they could push the tempo, they did. And a lot of times, they kept the defense scrambling like eggs with the cheese and apple juice. Looking at Charlotte, Kenny, your thoughts? They just gave up way too many good looks from the three-point line. That means either you haven't followed the game plan correctly, or you're not executing it correctly. Either way, it's wrong. So, from the looks of the first half, they need to aggressively close out on shooters to close this gap and the score. And that should do it. With the second half about to begin, let's send you back to Kevin Harlan. Go back to Kevin Harlan. Go. Go over there. We played through the first half. Plenty of basketball, though, left in this one. You look at Miles Bridges. He's been playing really well. He's done a fantastic job of finding open space to operate within the first few quarters. Yeah, the offense looks crisp, and guys are hitting their shots. And we've got third quarter of basketball for you. Two quarters in the books. Hornets trail by nine. And with all their rangy wing defenders, the Celtics are well-suited for the modern game. Oh, yeah, they make it tough for opponents to get clean looks on the perimeter uh, GA with their defense. I mean, it's a strong defensive team also because of the competitors that they possess. Second half underway. Here's who Brad Stevens got on the floor. Down is the two with Tatum at the three. Addis went out there with Horford, and it's White in at the one. Here's White after the basket by Montrez Harrell. White inside, and that one drops. White's got five points so far. And that's exactly what you want to start the second half. Smart play call. No, I agree with this, uh, G.A. I mean, you try to jump on him, dictate the tempo, seize the momentum. Now here's Harrell. Rebounded by the Celtics. Mattis one's got his fourth rebound in this one. Well, until he starts knocking down some shots, I don't think the deficit's going to get any smaller. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. A 29th pick in 2017 by the Spurs. Their injuries last year created an opportunity for Derek White to show Greg what he can do with steady minutes. And White at 6'4", capable of manning either guard spot. A shooter, a playmaker, and an all-defensive team in college. Take a break. He is a break. definitely Two a shots. keeper. And that one falls for White. Fans, just broadcasters, love to see teams get out and attack in transition. Would you like to see the league crack down on intentional fouls that, that, that will halt that break, slow down that break, stifle that break? No, because the, the home fans or the fans of the team that's fouling doesn't want... that team to get out and get an easy two points. I mean, we still have to have defense in the game, so anything that takes away from team scoring, you just can't say, well, we want to watch them score. Don't do yeah. it. No. And uh, very honestly, if you're an unselfish team, usually on those breaks, it's usually because a player holds the ball to right. Usually they have another open player in front of them that they can pass it up to. And if you're an unselfish team, usually you'll still give the fans what they want. And that's a crazy highlight in the break. <laughs> they get it again. Brown wide open. He fires. Gets an open look and hits. Brown's got 15. It's amazing. The development of Brown as a scorer, and he's an exciting two-way talent. He's showing us all that tonight. Ball against Brown. And Tatum over to help. 
Bridges passes to Harrell. Hayward trying to get open. Missile blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. For Charlotte, they have made seven out of nine when they've stepped to the line. And when you look at their numbers from a season ago, 80% as a unit, that's something you'll be happy with. Yeah, and the Celtics had their issues last season, Kevin, but, but in the end, they lost to a super team. I mean, the East has just gotten better, uh, led by Toronto uh, and the Bucs. Um, that's, that's a big challenge for Boston. Here's Tatum. Takes it into the teeth of the D and converts the way up. He has six. They're on target from the start of the half. I mean, they're moving well. They're getting some good shots. Uh, that makes them three for four from the field since halftime. Now, here's Ball. No points in the game yet for him. A shot by Hayward, wide open, and it's off from three-point range. Well, Chris, with LeBron going to the Lakers, many picked the Celtics to rule the East. Now that road is less certain. Oh, yeah, because the East has gotten good. Let's think about it. Philly, uh, Toronto, uh, the reigning champions. Also, just, you know, and don't forget about Boston. I mean, but they have the talent to play with anyone. Now it's a matter of maximizing that talent and becoming the best version of themselves. Uh, unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flames. Oh, yeah, and that's what you love about him. He shows no mercy, even with a comfortable lead. Well, Celtic shooting their seventh attempt at the foul line in this one. One shot. Guys, you talk about players coming in, and with a huge impact, Jason Tatum showed he was more than ready to be an NBA star. Where do you see a player as polished and as impactful as Tatum? Stepped right in to be one of the top players on a top team with Boston. Fits their system perfectly, and really the sky is the limit for that young man. And here's Brown outside. Good on the triple. Time out, time out. Brown's got six here in this quarter. Such a consistent night for him from the field. Whenever they've needed it, he's been their safety valve. And the Hornets call time here. Moves on moves. <laughs> Greg, that's Jason Tatum. I mean, this guy's a natural isolation scorer. Jab steps, crossovers, turnarounds, fadeaways. He's got an awful lot in his bag. Gomez has checked in for Gordon Hayward. Now let's take a look at the most efficient scores in the NBA from last year's campaign. Fifth is Montrez Hill. Put the ball in the bucket. I mean, that's the name of the game, right? I mean, just ask him. He'll have the answer for you. Hornets trail by 19. Here's Ball. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Here's Bridges. That one's off. Still out of sync. Austin's gone two or three when they ventured outside the arc in the third quarter. Tatum's shot is off. They haven't needed him as much as I thought they would tonight. Here's Ball. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Yeah, first year uh, for Coach Borrego uh, as a head coach, but he had a solid start. He's uh, from the Popovich coaching tree. Uh, he was given the reins of the Hornets, and he was tasked with improving their offense. The Hornets have made their free throws at a pretty good clip. They've hit 8 of 10. And he knocks down the first one. 
And with Borrego as coach, the offense certainly was more fluid. Yeah, Borrego, he, he stresses ball movement. He encourages his players to look for early offense, more spacing in the system that benefits the whole roster. Looking at who's out there now for the Celtics. Williams comes in for Al Horford. And Brogdon subbed in for White. So he hits one of two from the strike. And along with the association, we've seen the growth of the G League, the WNBA, the 2K League. Chris, which of those have you followed the most? Well, first let me say I should have been drafted by the 2K League because I'm really nice. As a matter of fact, anybody <laughs> listening to the sound of my voice, I will beat you in the game that I'm talking on right now. But secondly, I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> I love the WNBA Super from two. Lisa Leslie to Cheryl Swoops to my girl Candace Parker. Are you kidding me? The skill set of these ladies. Oh, they have game. And I can't say I follow one the most because even the G League and their all star game I follow right now. It's a great time for hoops and all three of these leagues I'm in on. Out of Willer High School in Georgia, Jalen Brown was ranked second in the class of 2015 after Ben Simmons all the powerhouses came calling he went the unexpected route choosing UC Berkeley both shots good from the stripe and Cal Berkeley not the biggest basketball program in the country so Chris what led Brown to go there well former NBA all-star Sharif Abdul Rahim another Wheeler High alum took the same path Look, Kevin, both of them welcomed the intellectual challenge. Now, Sharif, not only could he hoop, but now he's the president of the G League. And Jalen Brown, he's the vice president of the Players League. Good on the three-point shot. A dangerous score from just about every area. Bridges very good at capitalizing in a number of ways. Now, here's Brogdon. Williams with a clean look. Bridges with the board. Bridges has got four rebounds now tonight. Ball, the pass to Bridges. Harris looking it over. Back to Bridges. Now the dish to Harris. Charlotte moving the ball around. No good from Henning Gomez. Celtics on offense. They're on a 17-7 run. You gotta love his aggressiveness to finish inside. Well, his leaping ability gives him a great advantage. And so it's Harris who will bring it up for the Hornets, trailing by 19. And the pass to Bridges. Dishes it to Harris. And Brown over to help. Ball finds Harris. For three, Bridges. Rebounded by the Celtics. Baddest one's got rebound number eight now on the night. Here's Brown. Brown jams it in. Uh, you know what, Kevin? You. Can't teach that Brown just showing off his incredible dunking ability. Brown against Ball. Pass to Hernan Gomez for the three. The Hornets now working with the new shot clock. Harold, that's good. He's getting hotter the deeper we get into this game. I mean, he didn't give him, didn't give him much of anything in the first half. Brogdon outside. Pass to Williams. Pass the baddest one. Brown outside. And the three off target. Hornets trail by 19. Bridges misses. This quarter has been hit or miss for him. Mostly miss. The three from Tatum. The shot, no good. And the Hornets now going the other way. Guys, they're looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively, for sure. Bridges misses. 
It's been a really tough quarter for him. I mean, he cannot get his shots to drop. Fires for three. Hornets with the rebound. His three-point game hasn't been there for him today, but don't sleep on him. At any moment, he could get his touch back. And it's out of bounds. The Celtics will take it the other way. And checking out the stats for Jason Tatum. Last year, getting it done. Last season, he averaged 15 points a game, six rebounds, and two assists. Fantastic totals for him across the board. I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps rolling. I think if you talk to anyone on this team, they believe in his abilities 100%. Biombo is checked in for Charlotte. Terry Rozier comes in for Devin Harris. Boston also with a sub. Robert Williams is checked in for Williams. And now the first time out called here for Boston. Some changes here for the Hornets. Zeller is checked in for Hernan Gomez. And Michael Kidd Gilchrist subbed in for Miles Bridges. Then for the Celtics, Alinari comes in for Baddest One. And Marcus Smart is subbed in for Jason Tatum. Well, with the role he's on this quarter, they're, they're going to keep going to him and get that lead even bigger. They get a hand on it. And Zeller kicks to Rozier. Back to Zeller. Over Williams. A nice shot by Zeller. Zeller's got five points so far. Well, if he gets his feet set and you give him time, Zeller can bury that in rhythm. Smart with the ball. He has five. It's Brogdon on the wing. Good, and Smart gets the assist. And that's now six points for Malcolm Brogdon. Uh, for the most part, he's been sitting back tonight, letting his teammates carry the load. Nothing wrong with that. Rozier against Brogdon. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle, and now a three-point play chance here for him. Yeah, he earned that one. I mean, taking the hit and still able to get that one to go down. And one of those little spark plug guys, Terry Rozier, plays the game with, a, Greg, I think a chip on his shoulder. I mean, the story goes, as a kid, when his temper flared, his mother would have to sit on him until he cooled down. He, he's learned to channel that fire and emotion into his game. Oh, the fearlessness by Rozier, that's what helps him earn the trip to the strike. Celtics leading by 19 points. Rodden kicks to Gallinari. Outside, Williams. Brockton outside. Shot clock at five. Let's it go. That one rolling around and rims out. And here's Rogier. He brings it up for the Hornets. Lays it up and banks it in. Rogier's got five points in the quarter. Taking it up strong against size. He does not lack for confidence. No, absolutely not. And in his mind, no one can stop him on that, no matter the size. Now Rozier, after Malcolm Brogdon's three-pointer that didn't go. Rozier kicks to Kid Gilchrist. Three-pointer. Rebound by Williams. Williams has got six rebounds in the game. Here's Smart. Ball with the rebound. Hornets trail by 17. Here's Kid Gilchrist. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. That one on Gallinari. And Kid Gilchrist is constantly looking to get to the line. Just a remarkable player who finds a way to get right up there in the defense. He'll take his third and fourth free throw shots of the game right here. 77% shooter at the line a season ago. Those are better than average numbers. And he makes the first. And in a short amount of time, Kia Gilchrist has established himself as one of the best perimeter defenders in the game. His long reach and tenacious athleticism really covers a lot of ground. And so he makes both from the line. 
Celtics leading by 15. Brogdon outside. Now the pass to Brock. Shakes off the strong D and gets the bucket for two. Brown's got 26 points. Charlotte has gotten one of six three-pointers to drop since coming out of the locker room at halftime. Outside, Kid Gilchrist. Here's Zeller. Yes, that goes in. Zeller's got his third bucket of the night. Look, he has a good feel for the painted area. Zeller, never in a rush. Very deliberate with his moves. Here's Brogdon. Buries it down low. And the Celtics lead by 17. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. <laughs> yeah, they're pouring it on right here. Trying to give the opposition no light at the end of the tunnel. Now, here's Biombo. Ogier for three. And Boston with the rebound. Brown's got four rebounds now tonight. Here's Smart. No good from outside. Charlotte shooting has been wayward so far. Only 37% from the floor. Taken away by Williams. And there's a whistle. That goes on Terry Rozier. That is his first foul of the game. And the Hornets making a change here. Hayward's checked in. Al Horford is checked in for the Celtics. Derek White comes in for Malcolm Brogdon. Celtics leading by 17. And here's White. He has seven. Got a piece of it. And registering one of the highest verticals at the NBA Combine, Zella can send your shot back. No one had more success at the foul line last season than this group of players. Malcolm Brogdon, number one. Colinari, fourth. And, and how about the work both of them put in from the foul line? Just such a consistent, dependable performance from both. First free throw is good. Hayward hits them both. Yeah, and Brad Stevens, credited for the culture he's helped establish in Boston. But last season, though, that took a hit. Now we'll see how he responds to that adversity. It's going to be interesting to see. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free throw line. And taking a look here at numbers for Gallinari, last season he played outstanding. Fourth in free throw percentage, and he also shot his way into the top five in percentage from long range. Just a knockdown shooter. And yeah, he was money from the charity stripe. Only a handful of players shot a better percentage last season. Tremendous asset. Two shot. And the first one at the line is good. The younger brother of Tyler Zeller and former Suns big man Luke Zeller. Cody has a good chance to be the best of all three. That one falls, so he hits both of them. 46 seconds left here in the third quarter. Pass to Gallinari. Takes a three. Here's Williams, and it's Williams finishing it off. Yeah, hard trying to keep Williams off the boards. He makes it a mission to keep possessions alive. White against Ball. Hayward from outside. No good. Shot missing. And it's Boston the other way. 22 is their biggest lead. And Gallinari kicks to Smart. 
down low. Here's Williams. Oh, and the jam by Williams. Oh, nice look there from Smart. Finding the open man. Now, here's Ball. Banked in off the glass. Now, how about how he sets his man up there, runs him right into the screen, and then gets the basket. Oh, and he no got it to yes. Ball. No way. What? Woo. Ball. from him right there. Nice play. Yeah. OMG. That's how you silence a crowd. Jalen Brown has been leading the charge for the Boston Celtics. He's up to 26 points in the game now. Just keeps pouring in the buckets. We'll get right back to the action when we return. And it's time to bring up the State Farm assist of the game. Yeah, and, and I, I like the fact we get to see this pass one more time. A magnificent feed, and you love to see your off guard taking over the playmaking duties with this much skill. Well, I like that he didn't make his decision too early. You know, he let the play develop. That's how you do it. Finds the weakness in that defense. And as we head into the fourth, we'll see if there's a comeback in the works or if it's more of the same from the first three quarters. A moment now to reset the lineups. Brought to us by Gatorade. All fueled up here for the fourth quarter. And Charlotte looking at who they've got. We've got Terry Rozier. Hayward out there with Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Then it's Cody Zeller. And it's Ball in at the point. Three on the clock. Smart with the ball. And Zeller picks him up defensively. He's done a lot of the little things to help put them in front. I mean, but his offense has not been there for him tonight. Ball kicks to Hayward. Misses the three. And the well is running dry for him right now. Nothing falling. Yeah, he's just hit a rough patch. He's trying to climb out of it, but he hasn't been successful. Now, here is Gallinari. Passes it to Horford. Gallinari in the corner. Boston needs to get off a shot. Here's Horford. And the shot is long. Hornets trail by 18. To the inside. Here's Zeller. That falls. Nice feed that time from Ball. And that's now 11 points for Cody Zeller. He has great body control for a big man. Zeller takes the hit, but keeps on finishing. Floats one up. Got a hand on it. They get it back. He gets it in there. And he's now got the double-double. Ten points and ten rebounds. And here's Ball. He'll bring it up for the Hornets. A great fourth quarter. Just giving up two points. Pass to Zeller. Inside. Rozier. Lays it up off the glass. Time out, time out. Well, you have to appreciate the ball moving and the commitment to getting a high percentage look. Now a timeout called by Boston. Every timeout, a chance to review the lineups, matchups, or call a play. You know, that's what coaches are paid to do, right? I mean, curious to see what they go with here. Changes for Charlotte. Harrell, he's checked in for Cody Zeller. Miles Bridges comes in for Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And Devin Harris is subbed in for Terry Rozier. The Celtics also changing it up. Baddest one comes in for Robert Williams. And it's Jason Tatum in for Gallinari. And the fadeaway was the only option he had on that one. Defender there all over. Here's Harrell. And Harrell slams it in. 
And, and didn't do anything fancy there, but didn't need to. Nope. He, his only concern right now is getting the points on the board. And I, I don't mean style points. Here's White. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. White's got nine points now in just the second half. Ball against White. Ball kicks to Harris. Stolen by Smart. And Tatum with a clear path to the hoop. And slam dunk by Tatum. That's just elite defense by Smart. Seizing the opportunity and taking it the other way. Ball against White. There's the pass to Bridges. A 15-footer. Here's Harrell. And he banks in the layup. How about this turnaround? He played a fringe role in the first half. And, and now he's the man for them. Now here's White. Tatum finds Horford. Over ball. That's good from Horford on the assist by Tatum. And that's now nine points for Al Horford. Right. You know, some scouts thought Tatum had tunnel vision, looking only for his own shot. But he's more about team. Hornets trail by 18. Pass to Harris. We've played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. Bridges for three. Hands it from downtown. Bridges has got 19 points. And they've got to talk to each other on D there. Miscommunication. And now he's able to make them pay. Smart with the ball. Harris is there. To the wing right side. Here's baddest one. Tried to come right back with the three of his own. But it's no good. Tatum against Hayward. Over Tatum. And that one hits back iron. Boston leading by 15. Here's Smart. And slam dunk by Smart. Uh, I like Smart being aggressive right time. Getting into the lane. Using his power and speed to his advantage. Ball. The pass to Harris. And Smart over to help. Passes to Bridges. To the paint. Here's Hayward. Count the bucket. And he's got a free throw coming up as well. That's the combination of skill and strength. Hayward draws contact. I mean, keeps his eyes on the rim and finishes the play. Jalen Brown's checked in for Smart. Gordon Hayward. And Hayward, no good on that one. For Boston, they've gone 5 of 11 from the field in the fourth quarter. Tatum, and the layup's good off the glass. And the Celtics lead by 17. Now showing off different dimensions to his game. I mean, Tatum's ability to get it done from there as well is impressive. Ball against Brown. Pass to Bridges. Clock at four, over Tatum. That one a tad offline to the right, but drops in for him. The jumper Bridges has is wet, demonstrating how lethal he is from his spots on the court. Now here's White, a three. The Hornets pull it in. Bridges has got his fifth rebound in this one. The pass to ball, and stolen by Horford. And there's the foul, it's on Miles Bridges. That's his third foul of the game. Ball against White. Passes it to baddest one. White against Ball. Ball with the rebound. Ball's got the glass covered here tonight. 11 boards for him. Bridges dishes the ball. Back to Bridges. Six on the shot clock. Here's Hayward. Rebounded by the Celtics. 22 is their biggest lead. Tatum wide open. He fires one. Bangs home the trifecta. Tatum's got 12 points here in the second half. And he's got his first three of the game. Took more than a half to do it, Joe. 
Ball, the pass to Harrell. He dishes it to Bridges. Great D that time from Tatum. And the activity he shows around the rim it is why he is such a respected defender. Yeah, you can see why he's established that reputation. Strong understanding of how to defend at the rim. Harris passes the ball. And good coming on the assist from Devin Harris. Harris has got six assists in the game. And here's White. He'll bring it up for the Boston Celtics. It's an 18-point lead. And there's the call on Montrez Harrell. That is his first foul of the game. So a whole new group on the floor now for Charlotte. Here's White. Pass to Horford. Gets it to drop, and now he's shooting at a 5-for-8 clip. Uh, he's a long and athletic big man. Horford's a dependable interior scoring option. Now Rozier. At the elbow, Zellin. And Charlotte again with the bucket. Uh -oh, with the second half he's having, I mean, his field goal percentage is way up there. A floater. Hornets with the rebound. Rozier's got four rebounds now tonight. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. And really trying to work the ball inside here and starting to get results. A lot of that offense coming in the paint here in the second half. And was last season really the first full season we got to see of Malik Monk? Was given a sizable part of the rotation and showed why he was a lottery pick for this team. Free throw drops for Monk. During most of his rookie season, Monk was relegated to the bench. Not sure if it was development or opportunity. Hard to say for Monk. The fact is, you can see the knack for scoring he has, even if he's a bit of a volume scorer at this point. Oh, no hesitation to get it to the rim. He uses his height advantage to convert the easy. Rozier against White. Rozier the pass to Bacon. Charlotte moving it around. Just five on the clock. Kicks to Monk. Puts up a three. That one, no good. And you could tell he thought he had a little more space, but the defender was right there. Oh, man, did you see him close that gap? What a great job. He made the shooter feel uncomfortable. Back to Brown. Fires the three. Zeller grabs the board. Zeller's got five rebounds tonight. Out to the right wing. Shot from six. And no good. Trying to use the glass. Boston leading by 17. White drives in. Makes it off the glass. White's got four points now in the quarter. I like that pick play. I mean, you can see how easily it makes it for him to get to the cup. Here's Rozier. Pass to Bacon. He kicks it to Zeller. Here's Bacon. Bunk for three. That one misses. Austin's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. And the pass to Horford. And foul on the shot, so he'll get a chance at the line. And we come back to it again and again. If you're just looking at points and rebounds, you really miss Al Horford's impact. It goes way deeper than the box score. First one falls for him. 
And some detractors have looked at Horford's stats, and Greg, they said he's not an all-star. Even Sports Talk Radio calling him average Al. Nonsense. I mean, still a great defender, efficient scorer, elite passer as well for a big man. Then you get to his leadership. Big Al is the total package. So Horford gets two. With more star players changing teams. The word tampering comes up, Chris. Is the league striking the right balance on enforcement? Oh, yes. And, and you know, uh, Commissioner Silver, he knows all the tricks. He doesn't want it to be a police state, but he, he knows a, a wink from a wink. Right, You know yes. what I mean? So you got to draw some lines. But again, how do you stop it? I mean, you know, if I'm playing on the Lakers and I say, wow. You know, I think uh, Anthony Davis has the best eyebrows in the world. You know, you got to let me say that. And, and, you know, if that's recruiting, it's recruiting. So it's a fine line. And hopefully uh, the players have some fun with it. And hopefully uh, uh, Commissioner Silver does his best to police it while everyone uh, is at the same time is working through with integrity. Shooting two. No good on that one. So an almost entirely new group in now for Charlotte. Kid Gilchrist is checked in for Montrez Harrell. Dwayne Bacon comes in for Miles Bridges. Malik Monk, he's checked in for Harris. And it's Rogier in for Ball. So Boston going with almost an entire new group here. Robert Williams, he's checked in for the baddest one. Tolliver comes in for Al Horford. Avery Bradley, he's checked in for Jason Tatum. And Langford subbed in for Brown. And he's good on the second. There's 154 left in the fourth quarter. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Making the pass to Rozier. Charlotte no good that time either. Celtics leading by 22. Langford with it. The shot. Zeller grabs the board. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it. Just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for Boston. This was a team performing to its uh, fullest capability. Uh, a, a hugely satisfying win. A, a, a game that not many will soon forget. And on the other side, one that I think most will try to forget. And now, for the year, this is going to take them to seven wins. And this is a great way for them to kick off this season series. Two more games ahead, and they've taken the mental advantage with this win tonight. And guys, one of the steady and outstanding players putting in another impressive performance, it was a big-time outing for Jalen Brown. Oh, man, anticipation, instincts, energy. All his tools were on display tonight as he lit the place up. Now White, after the miss three from Malik Monk. Tolliver kicks to Langford. The Celtics working the ball around now. Just five to shoot. To the inside, Williams. And it's good with time running down on the shot clock. And it's just competing. You know, giving your best when it matters most. Well, this is what guys play for. And when it pans out like this, it's a great feeling. We've got 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And here is Rogier. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. And that's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game and, and just completely took the crowd out of it, that's how to get it done on the road. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much. Danilo, transition, big for your team. I assume that was a big focus tonight. Yes, we want to run, and that's what we have to do every time. So that's what we did, and we played a great game. Gallo, thanks very much. Congrats again. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. 
for Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Alton. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.